Back in downtown Kansas City on a Friday night where only one spot in tomorrow night's NAIA National Championship game remains. And it will go to one of these two hopefuls. A pair of 30 win teams squaring off in the Fab Four tonight. The third seeded Georgetown Tigers and the number two seed Indiana Tech Warriors. Nate Gatter back with you inside Municipal Auditorium in KC. Georgetown coming off the upset win of top seeded Grace. Jay Gomer led the way with 33 points. Nobody else has scored more than 28 in a game in Kansas City this year. Omer piled up 33. He had seven three-pointers, mostly as part of a 21-point first half. Those seven threes, more than twice as many anyone had hit in the tournament up to that point. Josiah, Josiah De La Serta filled it up with threes earlier tonight. Meanwhile, Blake Davison had a very strong performance in his own right, despite the fact that he was mired to the bench for substantial stretches of that quarterfinal win over ACU with foul trouble. Foul trouble was a theme in that game and in some others on quarterfinal Wednesday. So here we go tonight from Kansas City. Drew Lamont and Josh Klein, a couple of number 22s jump against one another. Lamont wins it for Georgetown, and the Tigers into the front court in their black uniforms against the gray of Indiana Tech. It's Omer and Wales in the backcourt with Dozier, Jones, and Lamont in the front court for Georgetown tonight. Here's Kyron Jones, who has been phenomenal in Kansas City. He bangs into Klein, can't get his first one, and it's rebounded by Davison. He's joined in the backcourt by Corey McKinney and Grant Smith. The frontcourt for Tech is Rod Stein and Josh Klein. There is the one change to the Georgetown starting lineup. Cam Brooks Harris does not start tonight. Klein turns, can't score, and Jones has the rebound. Tay Dozier, after his 18 points off the bench Wednesday, is in to start for Georgetown this evening in the Fab Four. It's Dozier against Davison out high for the Tigers. Eight to shoot for Dozier. Lost the handle for a moment. Pulls up over Davison with a hand right in his face. And Tay Dozier picks up right where he left off. True freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. He had 18 points to go with six rebounds and four assists. And he did that in just 27 minutes in the Wednesday win for Georgetown in the quarterfinals. Lob to climb, but it will not count. Offensive foul. Drew Lamont drew the charge on Rod Stein. Dozier, by the way, has been hyper efficient. Six of eight, including a three-pointer and five of six at the line. In that Wednesday victory. When they got past Top seeded Grace, 92 to 85. Trailed by double digits in the first half of that game, and then Jake Omer caught uh, fire down the stretch. Dozier again. Hit eight of 10 now. Between last game and the first couple of minutes tonight. Four nothing lead for Georgetown. Smith thought about it. Top skip pass to Stein. Drives on Jones, got a little separation, and Jones has another rebound. It's already his second. He has had two double-doubles, and that really sells him short, to be honest, in the first two games for Georgetown here at Municipal Auditorium. Dozier finally misses, and McKinney collects the board. Corey McKinney in the open floor. Slips a bounce pass into Klein. Follows his own miss and scores, plus the foul. Josh Klein was quiet in the round of 16. He had 14 points, five rebounds. A leading scorer this year for Indiana Tech in the quarterfinal win. 62% foul shooter, and he tacks it on. The Quay Wales sort of uh, occupies the Carter Handred role that we were talking about earlier for College of Idaho. He fills that role for Georgetown. He will not fill up the stat sheet, but he orchestrates a lot of this offense for the scores, led by Jake Omer. Has his first two after the 33 on Wednesday night. Came into KC averaging 16 and a half a game. McKinney gets to the cup for two. South Bend 
Indiana native, a grad student at Tech, and he played really well, I thought. Only two of seven from the field, but he impacted the game in a lot of different ways for the Warriors on Wednesday. Eight points, eight rebounds, added four assists. Wales averages close to four assists a game to lead the Tigers, but he gets in for two there. He did not score in his 22 minutes, nor did he have a rebound, and only one assist. At times, he was lost out there Wednesday. But a nice drive and finish. Georgetown's lead back to three. Davison, first shot on the way. In and out, and Jones has his third rebound. That's 30 rebounds for Jones since he's been in Kansas City. Finds a cutting, Dozier for the two-hand stop. Tay Dozier has a half dozen in the opening four minutes, and Georgetown leads by five. Davison works on the baseline, takes a bump from Lamont and turns it over. Five on four with Davison trailing the play. Wales in the corner. Wales for three. Side of the iron, loose ball, corralled by Smith, and here comes Tech. He runs into Lamont. They can't believe there was no foul. Omer goes in for two. Ted Albert is beside himself. Drew Lamont says he was just standing still, and Grant Smith ran right into him. Three turnovers for Indiana Tech already. Jake Homer has four, Tay Dozier has six. Georgetown leads by seven. Smith caught backboard first. And Georgetown has a chance to extend this lead in the early going. Omer, a bomb. He got it plus a foul. Jake Omer. Ten-point lead for Georgetown. And Omer will be at the line after the break. Three-time NAIA national champions welcome Indiana Tech to the Fab Four rather rudely. Tay Dozier the stop. Jake Omer from 30 feet. Seven threes on Wednesday. There's his first tonight. You know, it's easy to get caught up in emotions around, oh, I feel good, or I feel like I'm getting better, or I feel like I'm getting worse. But having data, big data, over a long stretch of time allows you to actually see your work come into fruition in the form of progress. It just allows you to create a better perspective over your, your progression. To ignore it entirely is doing yourself a disservice um, because it's a resource that's available to you. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. There are two key moments in any college journey, when an acceptance letter arrives and the day the college education is paid off. And College Ave Student Loans is with you to help cover costs all along the way. We offer stress-free private student loans for undergrads, grad students, for parents, even loans to refinance your existing loans. Whether you're starting college, already in the workplace, or just trying to figure things out, turn to College Ave and breathe easy. Chris Briggs has won two national championships as Georgetown's coach, including one in 2019, the last time the Tigers were here in Kansas City. They were the number one team in 2020 and didn't get a chance to finish the job that year. Omer can't tack on the four-point play. And they've suffered first-round exits the last two years, which for a team with the Tigers' pedigree is bordering on cellar dwelling. It's their 32nd consecutive appearance in the NAIA tournament, 42nd overall. Good feed underneath for a cutting Grant Smith, and he has the layout. Briggs and the Tigers have their eye on a fourth national title in program history and his third this year. Jones gets underneath for two, beat Lucas Lerman to the opposite side of the rim. And it's all Tigers early on. Eight of 11 from the field. A 10-point lead. 
Smith on the baseline. Got it. Four quick ones for Grant Smith. But three Indiana Tech turnovers have hurt. And the Tigers are hot. Jake Omer, seven points. He's hit all three of his shots from the field, including a 30-foot straight on three. Tay Dozier has six. He's hit three of four. Kyron Jones just got on the board with his first two. Lamont, he's the only starter who has not yet scored for the Tigers. Smith negotiates his way to the paint, spins away from Wales, goes up in traffic, and it's rebounded by Lamont, his second. An explosive first six and a half minutes for Georgetown. Omer, what a shot off the heel. And he screeches in and pokes it away. Steve Helm lost it, Omer's three. Left it short, rebounded by Dozier. Another chance for Georgetown, Lamont. Off back iron and Lerman finally has it. Three good looks for the Tigers. In particular, the second and third were open three-pointers. Fortunate for Indiana Tech, none of those went down. Helm attacks, Lerman tips, Omer secures. Jake Omer is feeling it. Jake Omer to the cup. Nine points already for Jake Omer. The only player who's put up a 30-piece in Kansas City this year. He had 33 points on Wednesday in the quarterfinal win over Grace. Grant Smith slips a low bounce pass to Lerman. Tough for a big man to secure that. Rod Stein with a shot clock under 10. Works in on Jones, spins to the baseline, missed the lefty hook. 10-point lead for Georgetown with a chance to extend it. Wales. Tigers have only made one three in this onslaught, one for six. But they've made eight of their 10 shots from inside the arc, and Wales hits a bomb. 13-point lead for Georgetown, largest of the night. And an early timeout called by Ted Albert. The next whistle would have been immediate timeout, but Ted Albert couldn't wait any longer. 13-point advantage for the third seed at Georgetown. The first time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with auto focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the to focus at. Instant uploads and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. for Georgetown and Chris Briggs looking for a third national title this year. And he is uh, well off to his, a good start here with a chance to put the Tigers through to tomorrow night's national championship game. It'll come your way at 7 Central Time on ESPN3. Would be the fourth appearance for the Tigers in the championship game under Briggs, their eighth overall. They have won three of their prior seven trips to the national title game. But still a lot of basketball to be played. Max Perez, three. Rims out. Wales got a hand on the rebound. It's tracked down by Jabrion Spikes. Freshman from Princeton, Kentucky, just on. 
Takeover has nine already. Draws a very hard hedge from Lerman. Tommy Thomas in for the first time. Five and Black, the junior from Harlem. Wales is feeling a little more in the mood at this end. He wants a deep two, and that goes down. Seven early for Wales after he went scoreless in 22 minutes Wednesday. Rashad Bishop is also on for Georgetown, 24 in black. It's just the starting backcourt of Wales and Omer still on the floor for the Georgetown Tigers. Perez, quarter three, that one's good. He missed all three of his triples on Wednesday in Indiana Tech's three-point win over top seed at Arizona Christian. And he missed his first one tonight, but that gets Perez on track. 46% three-point shooter this year, sophomore from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Bishop takes a tumble. Thomas takes a drive. Skips it to Wales, another three. Bishop had a chance at it, but Perez corrals it. Bishop and Lerman down behind the play. It's four on four. McKinney. Helm for three, way off. He hit one on Tuesday in the round of 16, but he did not have a good shooting night on Wednesday. There's a foul and a rebound against Tech. I think it's gonna be Rod Stein. They'll make it Lucas Lerman who picks up the foul. Not a good start for Ted Albert in his sixth year, a two-time NAIA national champion. And the division two level, once as a player, once as an assistant coach at Cornerstone. He has a lot of work to do. 12 point lead for Georgetown with the basketball. Tigers have led by as many as 15. Thomas finds spikes, thought about a three. Spikes out for Thomas again. Floater goes down. Georgetown, by the way, has uh, gone to the bench further. Uh, Kyra Jones has returned, along with Seth Johnson, sophomore from Crestwood, whom I don't think we've seen in the prior two games in Kansas City, at least not for many minutes. Helm gets inside and scores. Maybe that'll get Steve Helm going. He has not had his A game offensively. Omer sits down for Georgetown along with Wales. A great start for both of them. Here's Johnson. Bishop working on Klein. The hook just crawls over the rim. Georgetown lead back out to 14. A high scoring start for the Tigers. Not many teams have piled up the points like this, especially in first halves in KC this year. And there's a second offensive foul on Rod Stein in the first half. And he is going to have to sit down. Jeremy Luciani is coming to check in. Along with Brady Titus for the first time. And Blake Davison returns. Stein sits down along with McKinney. And Lerman. Eleven minutes gone by, Georgetown has piled up 28 points on 59% shooting from the field. 11 of 14 from inside the arc. Just two of eight from three, and the Tigers have missed their only free throw. Jones off the mark, Johnson after the rebound, so too is Titus, and he pulls it away. Couple of Tigers behind the play, it's five on three. Davison high off the window over Jones. Nice finish by Blake Davison for his first bucket tonight. He was really good for his 18 points in just 22 minutes with foul trouble on Wednesday. Jones really didn't get it going for Georgetown Wednesday until the second half. Thomas pulls up and sticks it. I can't say enough about how good Rashad, or I should say Kyron Jones has been in this tournament. He and Jake Omer. Making all tournament team pushes for sure. Josiah De Lacerda has to be a lock. Tight is short, rebounded by Thomas. Johnson 
Little ball fake, goes up on Luciani, couldn't finish and fly in the rebound. He threw it off Luciani's back, and Thomas grabbed it and scored. Oh my goodness, it's coming apart of the scene for Indiana Tech. Josh Klein just threw that right off Luciani's 23 in the middle of his back, and Thomas was first to react. 16-point lead for Georgetown. Davison, Klein skips it. Perez on Johnson, turns the corner, he hooked him, and he got away with it. The foul goes on Johnson. Mac Perez, very lucky, that was a bad hook, and the officials missed it. Well, this tournament has been on SC Top 10 this week. It might be headed for SC not Top 10 after that. Thomas capitalizes, Tigers all over him early. There's a beat in all of us. It drives us, it inspires us, and it pushes us through. It is there in preparation, it is there in battle, it is there in defeat, and in success. It's the engine, it's our God. And this beat is my own. This beat is how I live. And this is how I hydrate. Body on the sport water, hydration for athletes. I'm attorney Mike DiBasquale. People call me all the time and they say, hey Mike, we take my small case? Well listen, no case is small at my law firm. Every case is big. Whether you have a case worth $20,000 or a case worth millions of dollars, you'll have the full power and attention of my law firm. When you hire my law firm, you get a team of people working on your case, no matter how big or how small it is. Big cases are small, call me. I've got this. Call 816-888-7500. That's 816-888-7500. Georgetown has doubled up Indiana Tech in the first 13 minutes tonight from the Muni. Nick Adder and crew back with you from downtown Kansas City where Ted Albert and his crew have their work cut out for them over the final 27 minutes of this game. That's the good news though, still 27 minutes to go. And we have seen crazier things in this tournament, most notably in our first game today that said College of Idaho through to the national championship game with a one-point win over OUAZ. Max Perez gets the first free throw. With 12 and a half minutes left in that game, College of Idaho was up by 23. So this lead is not nearly that bad for Indiana Tech. And on top of that, they have more than twice as much time left. Now OUAZ made up the final 10 points in the last two and a half minutes when Matt Keeley and the Spirit decided to start fouling intentionally. The first intentional foul was committed with 2.28 to go in the game. And College of Idaho's poor free throw shooting nearly lost them the game, although the Yotes ended up winning the game by virtue of hitting their last four at the line. Jones gets inside and Kyron Jones has the bucket. That's his second. Four points for Jones early and he has just stuffed the stat sheet in the first couple of games for Georgetown in Kansas City. He went for 21 and 15 in the round of 16. Davison didn't get the roll, tipped up and in by Luciani. And Kyron Jones followed that up with 24 points and 12 rebounds in a Wednesday quarterfinal win for the Tigers over Grace. Speaking of comebacks, especially from first half deficits, Georgetown, it's easy to forget now, trailed Langston by 10 in the first half of their game and ended up winning by 14 on Tuesday afternoon. Foul called on Indiana Tech. That's the fifth team foul on the Warriors. And the first on Luciani. Rod Stein is on the bench for Tech with two fouls. And he has his shooting shirt back on, so it doesn't look like we're likely to see him 
with the remaining time in the first half. Tay Dozier and Jake Omer both back on for Georgetown. Spikes out of the corner. Dozier tips it up. Smith had his hands on the rebound. It's ripped away by Rashad Bishop. And this is what people will tell you about Georgetown. That they will play hard and physical and turn the game into a rock fight. And it's why a lot of people are intrigued about the possibility of a Georgetown College of Idaho matchup tomorrow night for the title. Good finish by Klein. And if there's a lasting legacy still of any difference that existed between NAIA's Division I and II, one at, before the divisions were dissolved three seasons ago and the 2021 tournament was the first to be played with one unified division, it's that the Division I teams do tend to be a little more physical. Bishop off, Jones got into Smith's back and he's called for the foul and the rebound, the first on Kyron Jones and third on Georgetown in the half. Because Grant Smith has this and Rashad Bishop just takes it away from him and goes back up and scores. The primary difference between Division I and II was that Division I just had more full scholarships available. And typically the Division II teams had a lot of great shooting. Davison curls around, finds Smith. He thought about the three, almost came off the ground. The Georgetown bench wanted to travel. He follows his own miss and gets fouled. So generally, you would see the Division I teams just had more athletes. They were more physical. They played uh, a more powerful brand of basketball as compared to the Division II finesse. And I think you can see a little bit of that in this tournament. Now, Indiana Tech is, is a more defensive team, and I think they play pretty rough and tumble. College of Idaho really does not play that kind of game. It's all about finesse, getting out in the open floor, how well they move the ball, how connected they are as a team, and also how deep they are. That's what really stands out, is, is how deep they go into their bench. And I think Georgetown is not as deep. Klein had a chance at the rebound. He still has his hands on it. And Indiana Tech called timeout. Grant Smith got the timeout. So Tech will keep the ball down 13. Georgetown, not as deep as College of Idaho, nobody is. But the Tigers do have probably more depth than any other team left at this point, aside from the Yokes. And they bring that kind of physicality that has made Tech uncomfortable so far, and you would think would also make College of Idaho uncomfortable. And the uh, worst case is it ends in a lot of Yotes free throws, which we saw tonight not, might not be the worst strategy to try to take them down. But Ted Alberts kids are battling back. Deficit was as large as 16 for Tech. It's now 13. And they will have the basketball out of the timeout. They would have kept it anyway with a possession arrow. And uh, I wonder, that's an interesting conversation. You know, timeouts are less, uh, not as easy to quantify as in basketball as they are, say, in football for their value because stopping the clock is not really a factor in it. It doesn't, you don't save time by calling a timeout in basketball. And I wonder if Ted Lerner, or Ted Lerner, if Ted Albert had it to do over and could have uh, chosen, would he have rather just gone ahead and taken the alternating possession? McKinney goes to Luciani for three and he hits it. 10 point game. On the three from Jeremy Luciani, senior from Marshall, Michigan, who shot 42% from deep this year. Because really that timeout for the Warriors did not actually save possession, it saved the possession arrow. Jones working on Luciani. This is where he's wanted to be one-on-one. -on -one. He can pull up for the mid-range or he can go to the rim. Lamont pulls up with a foul line. Off the heel, Jones has the offensive rebound. Dozier gets around the hedge, crosses over, steps back on Smith, left it short. Rebound by Luciani, and here comes McKinney. Indiana Tech can get it down to single digits. Luciani, a wide open look. This one's off. Rebounded by Jones, his fifth already. Now Indiana Tech overdrives, goes up over Smith, and he's fouled. 
just to put a bow on that discussion, I don't want to belabor the point, but now Indiana Tech has only two timeouts for the remainder of the game. And that is not an ultra comfortable situation for Ted Albert. He used one early and now he used another one. But Tech has cut it back down to 10 with three and a half to go. It's easy to get caught up in emotions around, oh, I feel good, or I feel like I'm getting better, or I feel like I'm getting worse. But having data, big data, over a long stretch of time allows you to actually see your work come into fruition in the form of progress. It just allows you to create a better perspective over your, your progression. To ignore it entirely is doing yourself a disservice um, because it's a resource that's available to you. Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. There are two key moments in any college journey when an acceptance letter arrives and the day the college education is paid off. And College App Student Loans is with you to help cover costs all along the way. We offer stress-free private student loans for undergrads, grad students, for parents, even loans to refinance your existing loans. Whether you're starting college, already in the workplace, or just trying to figure things out, turn to College App and breathe easy. Indiana Tech 31 and 4 this year, 18 and 2 in the WHAC. We have two 30 win teams facing off. The Warriors were down as many as 16 in this first half. They now trail by 10. And a couple of threes. The, the real problem is the turnovers. They have six, which is not a terrible number for this stage in the game. It's a little bit high, but only by one or two from where you could realistically expect to be. Georgetown has not turned the ball over in 16 and a half minutes. As a result, the Tigers have taken 33 shots from the field and Indiana Tech only 24. That's a killer. Because Georgetown's not even shooting the ball that well. Better than 50% from the field, which is good, but just two of nine from three. Foul called away for the basketball against Georgetown. It's going to go on Drew Lamont. That's the second on Lamont. We fouled out of the uh, quarterfinal. Georgetown went over Grace. The Tigers had a couple of guys foul out. Cam Brooks Harris, whom we have not seen yet tonight. After he started the first two games here in Kansas City, an 11 and a half point a game score. The junior from Zanesville, Ohio, has not appeared for Georgetown in this game. He fouled out as well as Lamont. Thrown up off the mark, and Jones has his sixth rebound. Cam Brooks Harris actually has fouled out of both games Georgetown has played here in Kansas City in just 39 combined minutes, which is kind of impressive. Whale surveys, Bishop has to get something up or get out of the lane. Off back iron, Dozier went up for the rebound, couldn't stick it back. Hey, Dozier can really get up, he is long and he is springy. 12 point deficit for Indiana Tech with the basketball. McKinney has not done much of the offensive end so far. Klein was held by Bishop as he tried to get after that pass. It's the sixth Georgetown team foul, the second personal on Bishop. I think that is first and the sixth against the team. Max Perez thought about a three, has one tonight. McKinney, Perez. To the rim, he stumbled, lost the ball, it's out of bounds, and Indiana Tech turnover, seventh for the Warriors tonight. You know, to, now that we're talking about it, I don't see Cam Brooks Harris even on the Georgetown bench. 
We weren't told anything about his availability or lack thereof. But I don't see Cambro Terrace on the bench in uniform for Georgetown tonight. Omer on the baseline over Klein. It's tipped by Bishop. And he had a tech wanted an offensive interference call, but it doesn't matter. McKinney's out the other way. Smith, his triple. Rebound loose. Bishop has it. Knocked free to Wales. Wales tied up for a moment by Luciani. He wants it right back from Jones, who didn't give it to him. Wales was clapping his hands at the big guy. Omer. A little bit of a post up on Perez, draws the foul. And Jake Omer will go to the free throw line for the third time tonight. He's made two out of three, and he just uh, gestured over the Georgetown bench. I don't know if that was a celebration or if it's more just telling the coaching staff he wants more of that, but he just put his hand down by his knee as to say he's too little. Meaning if they put Perez on me, I want to go one-on-one, -on -one, I suppose. Homer, a couple of misses at the free throw line so far. 77% free throw shooter on the season, but he's two of four at the foul line tonight. Still has a game high 11 points in the first half. 44 points in his last game and a half here in KC. The 11-point lead for Georgetown inside 80 seconds to play in the first quarter. His first half, I should say. Perez. Klein. Perez to McKinney, his best look. And it's down. Corey McKinney has had a really nice first half, albeit a quiet one. Five points. He's hit both his shots from the field. He's added two rebounds and three assists. The Maestro at that end for Tech. Jones, Bishop, hit, and a foul. Foul goes on Klein, his first. And here's another look at Corey McKinney. That's NBA range. He's a nice player, though, Corey McKinney. Brought a ton of energy, especially in that second half Wednesday against Arizona Christian when the Warriors were hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. Certainly College of Idaho came into this tournament as the comfortable favorite to the extent that anyone can be in a single elimination format. The unanimous number one team in the NAIA in the final coaches poll, which then rolled to its conference tournament title. No reason to think had that poll been conducted before our first games here at KC that it wouldn't have been unanimous with College of Idaho at number one. But you would think it was probably unanimous with Arizona Christian at number two, considering the season the Firestorm put together. The fact they were in the Fat Four a year ago brought back essentially everyone. McKinney pulls up. Just a little too strong. Rebounded by Dozier. Shot clock is dead. Georgetown can get the final shot, but Dozier streaks ahead, throws it up, and he's fouled. It's unfortunate for the Tigers because Bishop followed up with a dunk. Maybe just a fresh mistake there from Dozier. I mean, he saw the opportunity, and he is going to the line. But I wonder if Chris Briggs would have rather had the final shot there. Dozier at the line for two. Foul went on Blake Davison was his first. Ron Stein, the only player for Tech with multiple fouls. Drew Lamont, the only one with multiple for Georgetown. Dozier short, rebounded by Klein, and now Tech can get the final shot. Down 11. If the Warriors can cut this to single digits, they'll feel pretty good after trailing by as many as 16 in this half. Luciani got Jones in the air, tried to kick it for Davison. Three seconds for Georgetown. Wales for three at the horn, and it's off. Had the Tigers had just a couple seconds longer, that's probably a layup or a dunk. But Indiana Tech managed to shave five points off the deficit going down the stretch. It's a, an 11 point lead for the third seed Georgetown, trying to dance on to the NAIA national title game for the eighth time in program history, where the number one overall seed, College of Idaho, is waiting tomorrow night.
The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with auto focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the fly with the focus app. Instant uploads and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. You know, it's easy to get caught up in emotions around, oh, I feel good, or I feel like I'm getting better, or I feel like I'm getting worse. But having data, big data, over a long stretch of time allows you to actually see your work come into fruition in the form of progress. It just allows you to create a better perspective over your your progression. To ignore it entirely is doing yourself a disservice um, because it's a resource that's available to you. There are two key moments in any college journey, when an acceptance letter arrives and the day the college education is paid off. And College App Student Loans is with you to help cover costs all along the way. We offer stress-free private student loans for undergrads, grad students, for parents, even loans to refinance your existing loans. Whether you're starting college, already in the workplace, or just trying to figure things out, turn to College Ave and breathe easy. Did you know only 2% of college graduates feel that they've had a magical college experience? At St. Thomas University, we see the magic happening every day. When your professor becomes a mentor and learning becomes your passion. When you join a student organization and meet your friends for life, when your classes and activities prepare you for the real world and a successful career. At SGU, our students live the magic and their college experience leads to limitless possibilities. Visit stu.edu today. After 100 years, why are we still pushing for more? Because at Thomas More, we're inspired to help you create and live a fuller life. That means creating more opportunities for you inside the classroom and out. Programs that lead to something more than a job, a fulfilling career, and expecting more from our faculty and staff to help give you the opportunity to become the remarkable person you were created to be. Thomas More University. Make it more. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with auto focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the fly with the focus app. Instant uploads and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. The thing I love about Clark is that you're never just one thing. I'm not just a student. I'm a future doctor. I'm an athlete on a history-making team. I'm a community member supporting the causes I care about. I'm a friend, a neighbor, a leader. At Clark, you can become anything. What will you be? Be you at CU. Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. It's more than an education. 
It's more than a degree. William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Opportunity in a diverse student body. Opportunity in a staff that works with your budget. Opportunity in over 30 programs of study. Opportunity in a classroom where voice is heard. Find your future and the opportunities waiting for you. Start your planning today at wmpenn.edu and see why William Penn University is alive with opportunity. First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. You know, it's easy to get caught up in emotions around, oh, I feel good, or I feel like I'm getting better, or I feel like I'm getting worse. But having data, big data, over a long stretch of time allows you to actually see your work come into fruition in the form of progress. It just allows you to create a better perspective over your, your progression. To ignore it entirely is doing yourself a disservice um, because it's a resource that's available to you. There's a beat in all of us. It drives us, it inspires us, and it pushes us through. It is there in preparation, it is there in battle, it is there in defeat, and success. It's the engine, it's our God. And this beat is my own. This beat is how I live. And this is how I hydrate. Body, I'm a sport water, hydration for athletes. I'm attorney Mike DeBasquale. People call me all the time and they say, hey, Mike, we take my small case. Well, listen, no case is small at my law firm. Every case is big. Whether you have a case worth $20,000 or a case worth millions of dollars, you'll have the full power and attention of my law firm. When you hire my law firm, you get a team of people working on your case, no matter how big or how small it is. Big cases are small. Call me. I've got this. Call 816-888-7500. That's 816-888-7500.
Georgetown leads it by 11 at the half. The number three seed Tigers over the number two seed Warriors. Georgetown led it by as many as 16 in the first half. Indiana Tech not able to seriously cut into it, but it is a manageable deficit for the Warriors with 20 minutes to go. Those turnover numbers, that's the real key for the first half. By far the biggest advantage that Georgetown has statistically. Jake Omer, a very good first half coming off his 33 points Wednesday. Tay Dozier at six in the very early going for Georgetown. And Quay Wales, after he went scoreless on Wednesday, was helping out as well. Can get a feel for the balance for Indiana Tech, but it, it, it sort of feels obviously balance is generally a good thing. It sort of feels like somebody has to step up and be the guy. Because Indiana Tech in that first half was missing a Jake Over. And I'm not sure anybody else in this tournament really has a Jake Over. The way he carries himself, the extent to which he is the star and wants to be the star and takes that on his shoulders. But Indiana Tech needs somebody to do that with 20 minutes to go. And that's a rebounding foul called on Klein over the back of Lamont. And Josh Klein, the leading scorer for Indiana Tech, has his second foul. Just 14 seconds into the second half. Drew Lamont picked up two fouls quickly in the first half, so he should be fresh for the final 20. By the way, we did get an update at halftime on Cam Brooks Harris, who didn't start for Georgetown. He is back in Ohio dealing with uh, a personal matter for family reasons and uh, will not play tonight. No word one way or the other on whether he might be able to play for Georgetown tomorrow night should the Tigers advance to the national championship game. Cameron Jones works in on Raj Stein, lost the handle, threw it off the backboard, and Stein retrieves it. Stein was stuck on the bench for long stretches of the first half with two fouls. Indiana Tech somehow kept that alive. Smith on the up fake. Smith is fouled, and he'll have two free throws. But you wonder if Rod Stein could be that guy for Indiana Tech. He was the closer in the second half of the round of 16 win for Tech over Jamestown when the Warriors took down a hobbled Mason Walters and the Jimmies. Stein had 17 in that game. Followed it up with nine points, eight rebounds in the quarterfinal win against ACU on Wednesday. And the average is just about 12 and a half a game for the season. 13 a game for his first two here in Kansas City. But he did not score in the first half. 0 for 3 from the field. In large part because he spent the latter stages of it on the bench. Indiana Tech has it down to single digits. That was a, an insurmountable hurdle for the Warriors down the stretch in the first half. Lamont over Klein, and he gets on the board. Every starter has now scored for Georgetown. Seth Johnson and Jebrion Spikes are the only two Tigers who have appeared without scoring. Klein working on Lamont. Jones is eyeing him for a double. The double comes. Klein spins away. Rebound to Dozier. That's five rebounds for Tay Dozier to go with his seven points. Lamont triple. That looked good out of his hand, but it's too strong. Klein wins the race to the other end and beats Lamont to the glass. You don't see Drew Lamont out hustled very often. And then he's looking down at his right hand saying, you know, maybe smacking the backboard was not worth it. A little piece of blue confetti just fell down from the rafters. And Jake Gomer's trying to get Brian Jarrell, the official's attention, to say maybe we should pick that up. And they're going to play on. Lamont has to get it up. Work it on Stein. Fall away. Jay way short in a shot clock violation. And Brian Jarrell is going to take care of the uh, confetti there. And Lamont just a little bit slow getting back here. And you got to give Grant Smith a ton of credit. That is a 75, 80, 85 foot, foot laser. And he hit Klein in stride for two. That pass had to be perfect if Klein was going to get the ball up on the backboard before Lamont could get there. That's an assist by Smith. Rod Stein still scoreless, spins to create some space, and there's his first bucket. Closest Indiana Tech has been since the early stages of the first half. Corey McKinney slaps the floor in his exuberance. The Warriors crowd is fired up for the first time in forever. Dozier slipped past the double team. 
didn't make the handoff, and he goes to the rim for two. Tay Dozier turned loose. That's nine for Dozier. McKinney, tough, fall away. Jones has the rebound, his eighth. Omer ahead. He's probably looking for a shot. It had been a while. 14 for Jake Omer. He's getting to the rim with ease tonight. Davison tries to turn the corner on Wales. McKinney, Smith, spins, goes up over Wales, and he's fouled. First on Jaquay Wales, the second on Georgetown since halftime. And Smith will be in the foul line. Here's Rod Stein. He does this really well. Just under control, getting inside. Little spin for the bucket. And then here, Davison and Stein kind of ran into each other, kind of miscommunicated on the switch, or lack thereof. And the dribble handoff that wasn't became two points that were for Tay Dozier. Smith has another one at the line. He has shot well from the strike tonight. And Smith, five of six. On his free throws, he has a team high nine for Indiana Tech, and the lead is back down to nine. Homer wanted it on the flare. Here's Jones now against Stein. Jones back to his face-up game. Stein's all over him. Eight to shoot. Stein got a piece, and it's out with six on the timer. That takes us to a timeout. Four minutes played in the second half. Indiana Tech has trimmed two points off its halftime deficit. The Tigers still lead by nine. Inspiration, the divine influence of something. How do we inspire? We build ourselves up. We help each other out. We work hard so that we can achieve big things. We are Avalon, be inspired. Georgetown leads by nine, with just under 16 to go in the second half. Indiana Tech, though, has trailed by as many as 16 in the game. And the Warriors were down by 11 at halftime. And they have it down to nine, which is certainly manageable with 16 minutes to go. Big six seconds here left on the shot clock for Georgetown. Dozier comes to get it. He only has three to shoot. Hoist from three-point range, and it's rebounded by Stein. Important stop for Indiana Tech. I'd like to see the Warriors run a little bit more of their offense through Stein. Klein seals off Lamont. Davison gets inside and scores. Blake Davison has four points. Nice seal by Josh Klein. And Georgetown's lead has been trimmed to seven. That's as close as Tech has been in the second half. Dozier misses, and Davison has a chance to cut it down even further. Smith, lob for Klein. What a pass by Grant Smith. He has thrown two incredible passes in this half. Timeout, Georgetown. Oh, my goodness. Grant Smith saw this so late. He was finishing a crossover between his legs. 
He cut the ball with his right hand at his hip and threw an underhand alley-oop on a dime to climb. Look at this. This is an impossible pass. It's perfect. Five-point game. Grant Smith throwing dimes for Tech tonight. Court pressure on after a 6 0 run to cut it down to a five point Georgetown lead. This is the closest the Warriors have been since the early minutes. Georgetown led by as many as 16 in the first half. But we have seen one double digit lead after another blown in this tournament, and that is the third foul on Rod Stein, a costly one. You don't want to ask too many questions, second guess too extensively, but if Indiana Tech is going to turn up defensive pressure like that, how did nobody say to Rod Stein, that doesn't mean you? And he's going to stay in with three fouls and 15 minutes to go. Omer drives on McKinney, didn't get rim. Stein has the rebound. Georgetown is screaming, and that's an offensive foul on Rod Stein. He just got his fourth. Indiana Tech is saying that Dozier was in his airspace and Stein didn't have an opportunity to avoid him. But assuming the, stand, the signal made stands and they have made it again, it's an offensive foul on Ron Stein swinging his elbow. Oh, can't really see the contact from that angle, but that is a wild swing of the elbows. And do oh. Dozier is not in his airspace. Absolutely not. That is going to be a flagrant foul. Rod Stein's going to pick up his fourth here with almost 15 minutes to go in the game. Ted Albert didn't take him out when he got his third foul all of 10 seconds ago, and he paid the price because that's number four. And Rod Stein is going to be fortunate, to be frank with you, not to be thrown out of his game. He doesn't necessarily know that Dozier is there, but there's a certain amount of inferred malice from swinging your elbows like that. That is not a basketball play in any way, shape, or form. He catches Dozier, I think, in the neck here, maybe in the collarbone area, and it's only luck that that wasn't an elbow straight to Dozier's face. Oh. This is going to be a flagrant foul. I'd be shocked if it's not. Georgetown is going to shoot two and keep the ball. And remember this moment, 14.44 to go in the game, because this is, these last 10 seconds altered the complexion of this game pretty dramatically. Indiana Tech had all the momentum down by five. Stein looked comfortable early in the second half. You could tell the Warriors had missed him with his foul trouble in the first half, and then he picks up two fouls in 10 seconds. He's going to have to sit for a while and could well be limited to just a few minutes in the remainder of regulation, depending on how things go. Oh, I thought we were going to watch it full speed. That would have been unpleasant. 
And on top of that, this is likely to give Georgetown two free throws and the basketball. The Tigers will have a seven-point lead again if they make both and potentially a chance to throw it beyond that. Now, the officials are taking a really long look here. That leads me to believe, I, I don't think based on these replays, and I, I wish I could talk to all of you and hear what, what you think. I wish we could do an, an instant poll or something because I would be surprised if many people at home feel there's any chance that this remains a common foul. And generally, it's a pretty fine line between a flagrant one and a flagrant two. The definition typically includes, you know, going from a necessary content to something like unnecessary and excessive. And what's really the difference between those two words? I don't know. But the fact that the officials are taking so long looking at this, and I could be wrong, it leads me to believe they've already decided this is a flagrant. But there's substantial discussion going on about whether this warrants an ejection. Because I don't see any world where this is not a flagrant foul. I don't think I would eject Rod Stein just because I don't think there's enough evidence that he specifically saw Tay Dozier and that he, there was, that was a malicious elbow. But malicious is also a relatively apt adjective to describe the nature of how he was swinging his elbows, whether he had a specific target in mind or not. And the officials are taking a long time for this review. And I don't know what else the discussion could be about, because if, if there's anybody arguing that it's only a common foul, I would like to hear the rationale. Because that seems like exactly the kind of play the flagrant foul rule is designed to avoid. The flagrant two is really designed to avoid some kind of intentionally dangerous act. I don't know for me that it rises to that level. They're calling the coaches over though, and, and I don't think a flagrant two here is out of the equation. If it were me, I think I'd go with a flagrant one, call it two free throws for Georgetown in the ball, and be done with it. Neither coach seemed too upset, so I think probably that's where we're gonna be. If it were a flagrant two, I think Ted Albert would be furious. If it were a common foul, I think Georgetown would be furious. Wow. They've stuck with a common foul. That is shocking. Raj Stein checks out with four, so it's still a massive call either way because Raj Stein is going to have to sit for quite a while. Grant Smith saves it. Wow, what a play by Grant Smith. Davison in transition, missed it. Rebound loose, Lamont corrals it. Grant Smith is just doing crazy things with the basketball in this game. That was a silly save. Lamont straight on three, rattles out, McKinney the rebound. And a foul on Georgetown in the backboard. We're gonna wanna get another look at this save by Grant Smith. He has thrown a couple of unbelievable passes tonight, and that one is right up there. He hooks the ball with one hand and throws it powerfully back into the middle. Now, does he know Blake Davison is there? I would wager not. If he did, that's truly unbelievable. But he created a fast break that almost led to an Indiana Tech bucket, and somehow the Warriors survived that Rod Stein sequence without losing a lot of momentum. Smith, three on the way, off the mark, rebounded by Jones. He has nine boards. We've only played 26 minutes. Lamont posts right up on Klein. Bodies into his chest. Lost the ball. Wales recovers. Tyron Jones working on Luciani. Takes him to the baseline. Draws a double. Spins away to the middle for the right-hand hook. Tyron Jones has an awful lot in his bag. and He is a really difficult matchup for anybody. You watch him and you wonder if Georgetown does make it through. Who guards him for college violence? They don't have a matchup for that. Davison can't finish the layup and fly in there for the follow. Josh Klein is not flashy, but he does a lot of the dirty work in there. He has 11 points, and Indiana Tech stays within five. This feels like the Kyron Jones time of the game. He goes back to Lamont. Off the mark, Jones after the rebound with Luciani. Smith secures it, fires it ahead for Davison. He wants a transition three. Off the mark, rebound, foul on Lamont. 
Georgetown can't believe it. Here's Jones. See the double come. He just goes away from it. Just goes to where there's only one defender and scores over. Davidson with a nice little scoop, and you could tell he was feeling himself. It's Clyde with the follow. Davidson uh, had a little, a little heat check there on that transition three. It just hasn't been going for him tonight. Two of eight. Helm in the corner. Dozier fouled it. A couple of calls against Georgetown in a short span. That's five fouls against the Tigers in the second half. Dozier picks up his second. Steve Hellman, 86% foul shooter. You can see he had that very old school release, really deliberate. You know, the textbook shooting form of keeping that, that shooting arm totally straight. See how extreme he is, sort of holds the ball off to the side of his body a little bit. You see that? How up and down the arm is. He didn't get the second one. Down to four. Omer attacks Klein. Impossible fall away. Rebound is loose. Luciani has it, throws it through Helms. Legs out of bounds. Missed opportunity for Indiana Tech. And Ted Albert puts his hands on his head. That's a tough one for the Warriors. It was a good defensive possession. A rebound they had. Possession arrow favors Georgetown. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. 12 and a half to go. Jones on the step back. It's Kyron Jones time. Eight points, 10 rebounds. A basket away from his third double-double in as many games here in KC. Tough shot by McKinney, wouldn't drop. 11 rebounds for Jones. Wales with a head of steam. Wales on Perez. Wales on the pull up. Left it short. Perez the rebound. Homer gets back to cut off Perez. Angles through the paint. Helm open. Corner three. It's good. That's been a long time coming for Steve Helm, and look at what it means. Three point game. Omer turns the corner, throws it up. No. Indiana Tech can get even closer. The Warriors could tie with a three. Hell thought about another. Look to Perez, he's fouled. Third personal foul on Tay Dozier. He joins Lamont with three fouls and could be joining him on the bench in a moment. At six team fouls on Georgetown, so the bonus the rest of the way for Indiana Tech. A three-pointer finally goes down for Steve Helm. And the Warriors with the basketball, trailed only by three. Campusville helped me to get a job, get my master's, to prepare myself for the world. It offers students a tremendous amount of opportunity to get real world experience. We see Christian students, non-Christian students, we see people from every walk of life. It's such a good place to be. It kind of reminds me of home. Your teachers actually look out for you. You feel invited as soon as you walk in. 
you're not going to find any better place to help students achieve what they want. Steve Helm and Indiana Tech trailed by 16 at one point in the first half. The Warriors trailed by 11 at halftime. They have closed that deficit down to three. Get out, get out, get out. Max Perez for the tie. It's good. And a technical foul on the Indiana Tech bench. Oh my goodness. Just as the Warriors tied the game on a Max Perez three ball, a technical foul has been called on the Warriors bench. Their fifth three-pointer of the night, and that's what's kept them in this game, despite minus eight on the turnover margin. And Ted Albert is having a conversation. Perez three over Wales. And maybe somebody on the bench there for Tech just saying something specifically to a Georgetown player. That's all I can imagine. 15-4 run for the Warriors. But Jake Homer is going to go to the free throw line. And of all people you don't want on the line shooting technical free throws against you, I would think it's Jake Homer because it's just a chance for him to see the ball go through the basket. And right there, okay, now Jake Homer thinks he's hot. That was all it took. He's hot. Well, maybe not. One point lead for Georgetown either way. He thinks he's hot, that's the point. 15 points for Omer to lead all scores. That Perez three was his second. Yeah, look at the well-behaved Indiana Tech Warriors on the bench. It's like the first graders after the teacher really yells for the first time, they're all sitting still. Jones against Lerman. Jones all the way in. Jones in traffic, rebound to Luciani. Georgetown wanted a foul, didn't get it. Perez has two threes already, and he thought about pulling that one over Kyron Jones. Finds a cutting McKinney in traffic, wouldn't drop. McKinney the rebound, and he's fouled. Corey McKinney will be at the free throw line to shoot one of the bonus. The foul goes on Tay Dozier. That's his fourth. So Tay Dozier, who has been so good in Kansas City, now has four fouls. And Rashad Bishop is going to check in for him. The official stats put that down as a foul on Kyron Jones. But it was announced in the arena as a foul on Dozier. So they, they're going to need to get this clarified. And I think Chris Briggs is trying to get the officials' attention here to ask that question. I thought it was on Jones. They announced it as on Dozier. That's 11 versus 21. So easily the PA announcer could have gotten that wrong compared to what the scoreboard has. Either way, Indiana Tech has the lead. In the official scorebook, it's still only three fouls on Tay Dozier. So we'll see. He might be coming back in before too long. Here's Omer. Fall away, Jay. Left it short. Rebounded by Helm. Helm to Perez. McKinney. On the pull-up, he's fouled. And McKinney goes down hard, holding his ankle. McKinney seems like he's in some real pain, reaching down for that left foot or ankle. He's putting a little bit of weight on it. Was this Omer just getting into his landing space? Watch the left ankle here as he comes down. Yep. Oh, man. That's the kind of play the NBA in particular has worked really hard to take out of the game because of how dangerous it is. I think Indiana Tech here is considering using a timeout because there are not a lot of good options here. Corey McKinney is going to have to shoot these free throws injured, essentially. 
or they can call timeout to try to let him rest. Or if he can't shoot them, Georgetown will get to pick somebody off Indiana Tech's bench to shoot. McKinney's a good foul shooter, 75%. And he gets the first. And this becomes an important free throw. Davison's waiting to come in for McKinney, but McKinney has to make this to check out of the game. Otherwise, Indiana Tech will have to give a foul in order to stop the game and sub McKinney out, lest he be a defensive liability. But McKinney hits both. Two massive free throws from Corey McKinney, who can barely walk to the bench. What an effort. Indiana Tech from 16 down leads by three. Thomas, pull up, off, rebounded by Helm. Indiana Tech can extend it to a two possession advantage. Perez, good luck. Off the mark, rebound off Davison and out of bounds. He thought it last touched Georgetown. But well, the officials say Tigers basketball inside the final 10 minutes. Indiana Tech has been excellent at the free throw line tonight, 13 of 15 as a team. So something to keep an eye on. For the Warriors already in the bonus. Eight fouls against Georgetown in this half. The Tigers, meanwhile, a ways for the bonus. Only four on Indiana Tech. Jones attacks Luciani. Spins to the baseline. Floats it out to Thomas. Eight on the timer. He bowls over. Helm, it's an offensive foul. That's the ninth foul on Georgetown in the second half. So it'll be double bonus for Indiana Tech for nine minutes and 18 seconds. How about that? A lot of free throws could be coming for the Warriors. By the way, the Tigers have really struggled with the strike. Two, rather five of 11, and they're two of 14 from three-point range. Davison in traffic. No, Luciani's follow couldn't secure it. But the pass thrown away to Perez. Underneath Luciani wouldn't go. Two chances for Tech, nothing in. Thomas, baseline, spikes, foul. Blake Davison is coming over to the Indiana Tech bench. I think he was saying to the officials that he got hit in the face and either lost a contact or has a problem with his contact in his right eye. Bikes is proceeding with free throws. Davison's still on the line. Grant Smith just took off. That's not Grant Smith. Somebody else on the Indiana Tech bench just took off toward the locker room. Maybe to get backup contacts for Davison or solution or something. But his right eye is bugging him. He's going to stay in the game for the moment. Spikes has another. Off the mark on the second, Jones pursues for the offensive rebound. Kyron Jones, unbelievable on the backboards in this tournament. 13 rebounds tonight for Jones after 15 and 12, the first two games in KC. Wales, that's a two, off the mark. Pursued by Davison, Helm ahead of the pack, goes up on Wales, he got it, plus a foul. Warriors faithful to cheer him out of the first half. Boy, have they flipped the switch in the second. Helm has a free throw. He split a pair earlier. From down 16, Indiana Tech leads by five. Incredible. How much longer will Jake Omer sit on the bench? Thomas spins inside through traffic, won't go. Bishop's follow, he's fouled. 
Rashad Bishop will shoot free throws. The foul is on Steve Helm, which is first. Helm has nine points off the bench. And he was not in a confident place, you would think. He missed some shots badly the other night. He's shown impressive mental toughness to contribute as much as he has on the offensive end tonight for the Warriors. Another Georgetown missed free throw. The Tigers are 6 of 14 at the free throw line. Indiana Tech 14 of 16. That's an eight-point difference in free throws alone. Helped to make up for the fact that Georgetown has only three turnovers and Indiana Tech 10. Another one for Bishop. He gets one of two. Media timeout coming at the next whistle. Wales sits down for Georgetown next to Omer. You'd think that especially Omer will probably be back on the other side of the media timeout. And Georgetown now is into the bonus and will shoot at least one and one on all subsequent fouls. Helm was held, didn't get a call. Davison streaks to the rim. Just the third field goal on 10 tries for Blake Davison after he popped off for 18 in 22 minutes Wednesday. Tyron Jones turns, goes underneath Bishop, he rises, wouldn't drop. Jones re 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 pursues the basketball and gets another possession for Georgetown. Inside 7.20. Dozier, deep two, blocked by Davison with a foul. Davison's second personal. He's saying he got a piece of the ball. It looked like he did. Takes us into a timeout. Tay Dozier will be at the free throw line when we return. Unbelievable what we've had in this tournament with big leads blown. 16 points, Georgetown advantage evaporated. This year in Kansas City perhaps has sold us a little bit short on games that have come right down to the wire. We haven't had a true buzzer beater. Only a few of the 14 games so far have really been hanging in the balance in the final minute or two. But if you say that, you have to acknowledge it's made up for that in massive comebacks, in dramatic momentum swings during the course of a game. Georgetown was in total control of this game, was dominating in the first half. Up by 16, up by 11 at the half. Indiana Tech never quit, and the Warriors built a lead as big as six. They're up by four with seven to go. Still no Jake Homer on the floor for Georgetown. Grant Smith has returned for Indiana Tech. Smith around climb, blocked by Jones. What a play by Kyron Jones. He has been phenomenal again tonight. Lamont. And he stepped on the baseline. Wow, what a mistake. Drew Lamont just does not have the tournament he would have wanted. 
is Kyron Jones, even after the adjustment, swatted right on top of the ball. You have to wonder how long until Jake Omer is back on the floor. Six and a half minutes potentially to go in Georgetown season. He only has two fouls. Klein works in on Lamont. Wouldn't drop for him. That was a good look. Dozier. Isolated on Smith. Steps in. Wouldn't go. Klein the rebound. Dozier trailing the play. Smith with his head up. McKinney. Homer's back at the scorer's table. Davison slashes. Davison couldn't finish. Dozier snatches it out of the air. Another chance for Georgetown. An offense that has looked stagnant. You think this has to go through Kyron Jones. Thomas, spin move over McKinney, he scores. Two point game. On the one hand, it feels like Georgetown played way too well in the first half to be in a dogfight. On the other hand, it feels like Georgetown has played way too poorly in the second half to even have a chance. Indiana Tech has completely flipped the script. Here's Rod Stein with his four fouls, two of them offensive. Inside the scoop is there. Rod Stein has six, really three offensive fouls if you count the swinging elbow. So he has to be careful with that end of the floor. Omer and Wales both waiting at the scorer's table with five minutes to go. Dozier comes free. Jones against Klein, six to shoot. Jones tough shot, way off. Spikes follows and a foul on Davison. With one on the timer, Indiana Tech called him for a foul. That was a sure turnover. But Blake Davison is called for his fourth personal foul. Make it his third personal, Davison's third foul. Omer comes back on, as does Wales. That was a certain turnover. There was no chance Georgetown was going to get up another shot with a second to go on the timer and the ball loose. Instead, Spikes has one in the bonus. And he gets a second. What a big call that is. Fourteen forty-four was the Stein fourth foul. It could have been a flagrant. Four forty-four is a very controversial call against Indiana Tech that changes this game in allowing Georgetown to cut it down to three, but Spikes could not fully capitalize. Davison goes up on Dozier and a foul. That is number four on Tay Dozier. Four twenty-two still to go. And you think the freshman will stay out there now. Wales is still waiting at the scorer's table. He's going to come on for spikes. Davison gets the first one. No, he's going to come on for Dozier now. He was coming on for Spikes. That's why he had waited during the free throws. He was coming on for the shooter. But now with Dozier getting his fourth, they'll bring Wales on for him. So Georgetown is having to play here with two bench players. And even Dozier is a bench player in the sense that Cam Brooks Harris, the normal starter in his spot, is not available tonight. Five-point lead for Indiana Tech. And Omer is fouled by Helm. That's the ninth on Indiana Tech, so Omer will shoot a one and one. And Georgetown joins Indiana Tech in the double bonus for the final 4-10 of the game. Jake Omer's been pretty quiet in the second half.
He had 12 of his now 16 before halftime. He is 5 of 8 at the free throw line in this game. A big second one coming. Georgetown has struggled at the strike. Georgetown as a team, 12 of 21, sub 60%. Indiana Tech is shooting 89% of the line, 16 of 18. Three fewer attempts, but five more points at the line. You'd say four more points for the Warriors at the strike tonight. Davison gets a step underneath. Klein missed the bunny. On the follow, he's got it. 13.7 rebounds for Josh Klein. Indiana Tech keeping Georgetown at arm's length. Thomas wants to work on Klein. Good crossover for the layup. He got Klein's feet moving all kinds of ways. Tommy Thomas has played with confidence tonight. Ten points off the bench, a couple of rebounds. Smith. Davison looking at Stein. Spikes trying to deny. Stein faces, goes over Spikes, no call either way. Smith drives and spins it home, plus a foul. Georgetown is furious that there was no fifth foul on Rod Stein when he went over Spikes. Instead, count the basket plus the foul. Spikes took it in the chest. The official said no call. Smith plus the foul on Spikes. This is almost over. Georgetown has collapsed. Inspiration, the divine influence of something. How do we inspire? We build ourselves up. We help each other out. We work hard so that we can achieve big things. We are Avil, the Inspired. A lead of 23 points was trimmed all the way down to one in the final moments. OUAZ just could not complete the comeback. And the number one overall seed is through to tomorrow night's national championship game. 7 central time here in Municipal Auditorium in downtown Kansas City on ESPN3. Georgetown led by as many as 16 in the first half and by 11 at halftime. Indiana Tech leads by six with 3.13 to go. A tournament defined by double-digit leads alone. Will Georgetown be yet another victim? Dozer throws it away. That wasn't even close. Only the fifth Georgetown turnover tonight. The Tigers have shot two of 14 from three-point range, 12 of 21 of the line. Those two numbers, or four numbers collectively, have been their undoing. Davison happy to milk some clock. Smith works in on Dozier through contact. He was fouled. It nearly dropped. I don't think it would have counted anyway. But Smith will have two free throws. Indiana Tech as a team has made 17 of 19. And Tay Dozier just fouled out of the game. Ulamont is back on. Dozier had a very good first half. Just didn't work for him much in the second, but you could say that of really every Tiger except for Kyron Jones. Smith has made six of seven. A rare war.
Warriors miss tonight. They've also hit five threes on 13 tries. You know, maybe the most incredible number on Georgetown tonight, 24 made field goals. The Tigers have two assists as a team. Omer, oh my goodness. What a three by Jake Omer. There's the third assist. 20 points for Jake Omer tonight. And after Indiana Tech stretched the lead to seven for the first time in the game, Jake Omer with an incredible answer. Might that just light a fire under him? A 33-point score from Wednesday. Smith. Davison, five to shoot. Switch on over, spins to the paint, leaves it underneath. Lamont has it. 11th Indiana Tech turnover. Spikes. Final two minutes. Jones steps through and scores. Five straight for Georgetown. The three-time national champion showing their medal. One hundred seconds to play. A spot in tomorrow night's national title game against the top seed College of Idaho on the line. Ninety seconds. Stein on Jones. Smith. Stein again. On the baseline. He scores. Six points for Stein all in the second half. Seventy-five seconds. Omer, another, off the mark, rebounded by Smith, a big miss. Klein, fouled by Lamont. So Georgetown, taking something of a page out of OUAZ's book from earlier, has started to foul before it's absolutely necessary. Look at this shot, that's silly. And it was not a bad look on the next sequence. Here you see Jones duck inside and score. He has another double-double. They got a decent look for Omer on the next trip. His three-pointer would have cut it to one. Klein has hit his only free throw tonight. 62% shooter on the year. Even a couple more minutes misses for Tech tonight would have this hanging much more in the balance. The Warriors have been excellent at the line. And it drops. Doesn't hurt to have a little luck in March. Six point game. Omer turns on Hell, leans in, couldn't score. Klein has the rebound. Outlet to Stein, 50 seconds. Helm can go in all alone. It's an eight point lead for Tech. Thomas, no, it was tipped by Stein. 45 seconds left, and the Indiana Tech Warriors, from 16 down, are knocking on the door of their first ever national championship appearance. The officials might just want to double check on this. They're putting the shot clock to 28. Kyron Jones with a head of steam. Thought about pulling up, goes into Klein on the foul. Klein's third, and Kyron Jones will shoot two free throws. He has not been to the line tonight. Shoots at 62% for the year. Jake Omer hit that incredible three, you thought there was a chance. When Jones got the layup, you thought there was a real chance. Jones hits both, timeout, Chris Briggs. Six point deficit facing the Tigers with 41 seconds to go. That second three they drew up for Omer, the one off the right wing, that he didn't quite hit. That was a pretty clean look under the circumstances and would have made it a one point game. I think that's the moment you go back to that would have transformed the final minute had he been able to connect. A lot of pedigree in that huddle. Do the Tigers have some magic in them? An enormous amount of credit for Longston Eckler. 
The Warriors looked almost left for dead in the first half. It wasn't just a 16-point deficit. They were dominated to that point, and they were making silly mistakes, turning the ball over. It would have been easy to roll over and die. They have showed some incredible resilience tonight. We've talked a lot during this tournament about how young a lot of these teams are. That is not the case for Indiana Tech. Grant Smith, a grad student. Rod Stein, a grad student. Corey McKinney, grad student. Lucas Lerman, Josh Klein, grad student. Luciani, a senior, Helmer Redshirt Jr. It's into Davison, one of the only youngsters who plays substantial minutes, and he calls Indiana Tech's penultimate timeout. Max Perra is also a sophomore. Brady Titus plays a few minutes. He's a freshman. But well, this is a very veteran team compared to most here. Contrast it against Georgetown, which only has two seniors, Jake Omer and Drew Lamont. And the College of Idaho, which doesn't have a single senior in the rotation. And that would be the storyline if the Warriors do indeed advance to play College of Idaho tomorrow night. I don't think anybody would say the Yotes are anything less than favorites on paper. In fact, they might be reasonably substantial favorites. They have a lot of shooting. They have a little more depth than Tech does, especially if Corey McKinney is not able to play. We haven't seen him since he hurt his left ankle in the second half. Just checking the clock. It all seems fine there. Let's see here. Oh, did it not start until too late? Interesting, maybe you could take a little bit of time off, although that was a couple passages of play ago. So they're gonna leave the clock to 38.2, evidently. They didn't tell us specifically what they were, that's what they were looking at. That play is what they were looking at. We don't know specifically what they were looking for. But everything seems to be in order. So now this is going to be a trickier inbound for Tech because Grant Smith will not be able to move at all. This is a stationary. The Warriors have just one timeout left. Smith gets it into Stein. He's fouled by Kyron Jones. That's the fourth on Jones. And Indiana Tech is down to one timeout. They haven't changed it on the scoreboard here in the arena, and our score bug is tied to that. But that's mistaken. Indiana Tech down to one. Stein misses the first. We saw what missed free throws can do. In the first game tonight, when College of Idaho shot so poorly from the free throw line and nearly coughed up a place in the national championship game as a result. Stein has another one, 65% shooter on the year, and he gets the second, that's a big one. Extends it back to seven. Thomas with a head of steam, 35 seconds. Thomas downhill all the way, over Davison, wouldn't go. Jones tips it to himself, but a foul on the rebound against Kyron Jones, and he is finished. So too might be Georgetown. Jones joins Dozier having fouled out. Chris Briggs is upset. I think that was a good call. From our vantage point, it looked like Jones was on his back. You can understand Chris Briggs' frustration. His club blew a 16-point lead in this game. And it looks like the last bits of hope for the Tigers might now be gone. Stein has two more after he split that pair moments ago. Looking like Indiana Tech and College of Idaho for the national championship. The latter, everybody saw coming. The former, I wouldn't say many. 
And just talking to people around this building who have seen a lot of NAI basketball, including this tournament, I'm not sure there was much optimism about Tech even coming into this game. Grant Smith swoops in for the rebound. No foul for Georgetown. They have to give it. Finally, Omer does. But it's just about over. I think the consensus around here was that Georgetown was going to win this game and give College of Idaho all kinds of problems. It has not worked out that way. Now, how will Indiana Tech approach that game tomorrow night? That's the interesting question. You know Ted Albert will be aware of the struggles College of Idaho had tonight at the free throw line. Could that play a part? Can Tech get physical enough? Can Tech hit enough threes? Omer on the move, lobs it in for Spikes, open layup. 16.1 to go, timeout Chris Briggs. That's his last one. Seven point game with 16 seconds to go. Hope you'll join us tomorrow night, 7 Central on ESPN3. It would take something truly shocking to stop those folks from dancing on to tomorrow night here at the Muni. For Indiana Tech uh, against College of Idaho in the national championship game. If you're in Kansas City, you can also hear it on AM810 WHB. What a tournament indeed, and it feels fitting in many ways that today was defined by the theme of the tournament, blown leads. One of them did not come back to hurt the team that blew it. College of Idaho's lead dwindled from 23 down to a final win of one point. But one point wins count just the same as 23 around these parts, especially at this time of year. Georgetown, though, not so fortunate. It was a 22-point swing in that game from the largest lead to the smallest, 23 down to one. It's a 23-point swing in this game as it stands, almost identical. But for, unfortunately for Georgetown, the Tigers' lead was not 23, it was only 16, and they did not have that many points to give. Chris Briggs is still upset, presumably, about the Kyron Jones foul. I haven't seen it a second time, but had a good angle on it the first time and felt pretty confident that was a, a foul. And Spikes and Smith tied up a little bit. And Smith will have free throws after a second and a half comes off the clock. Two for Smith. He has 13 points, seven of them at the line. Indiana Tech has missed a few down the stretch, but still 24 of 30, 80% at the stripe tonight. Probably need to keep up a similar efficiency tomorrow night. Their strategy will be a little bit less obvious against College of Idaho than Georgetown's would have been. Spikes caught in the air, gets it back. Tried to kick it to Omer, but Helm was there, and that will be all. Steve Helm dribbles it out, and for the first time in school history, Indiana Tech will play for a national title. The Warriors come from 16 down to knock off the most decorated team in this tournament by nine. Ted Albert and Tex moving on to take on the number one overall seed, College of Idaho, tomorrow night in Kansas City. This tournament has been something else. And this game, I'm not sure you've ever seen one that turned on a dime at halftime to the degree this one did. Georgetown outscored Indiana Tech 40-29 to in the first half. 
In the second half, it was Indiana Tech 51, Georgetown 31. From minus 11 to plus 20, can you believe a 31-point swing from the first half to the second? So there it is, College of Idaho at Indiana Tech tomorrow night at 7 Central on ESPN3 and on the radio locally in Kansas City on 810 AM WHB. Thanks so much for joining us all the way along on the NAIA Network here in Kansas City. What an effort from Indiana Tech, and it sets up a national title showdown for the Warriors against the College of Idaho. The Yotes will be favored, but after what you watch tonight, would you count the Warriors out? A huge thank you to everybody here in Kansas City, especially our fantastic crew for their work all week long. Nate Gatter saying good night from Municipal Auditorium. College of Idaho and Indiana Tech playing for a title tomorrow night.